In this short tutorial, we're going to look at um, a plausible strategy for removing what is the bane of the compositor's life, which is tracking markers uh, from green screen backdrops or, back or green screen floors. Uh, so you can see this plate that we've got uh, in front of us. We can see that we've got a tracking marker in this area around the uh, around the window. If we just uh, if we just set this playing we can see that there's quite a lot of uh, camera movement, sort of quite erratic camera movement going on within the few frames of the plate. So the basic premise here is that we'll track the marker to give us an accurate motion path and we'll then use a basic paint tool to paint over the marker by sampling an adjacent area of the screen. And finally we'll use a couple of expressions to connect the paint effect to the tracking data so the brush stro stroke actually follows the motion. So our first course of action is going to be to track the uh, is, is going to be to track the the uh, marker on 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 the window there. So we'll just bring this into a central area, just so see if it stays within. So it's looking okay. So we'll bring up our tracking tool. Just go into the motion tracking preset, and we will choose track motion to give ourselves a one point track. Oops. Bring this over towards the uh, towards the marker. Um, I'm just going to set up the the feature region just so that it's giving us the uh, the area of the uh, the full area of the cross, and I'm just going to extend the range of the search region. To a little, quite a little bit bigger than the feature region, just primarily because the uh, the the, uh, the plate is actually moving uh, quite radically. Now, one other thing that I'm going to do, which is something you may not have seen before, is I'm actually going to move the feature center. If I actually come over this, uh, and you can see that the cursor changes, I can now drag this out of the uh, out of the sort of center of the area. And I'm just going to bring it down here and place it uh, place it in this in this sort of adjacent area. So the premise here is that is that we're going to generate our track from the uh, fr from this area of contrast on the green screen, but the centre of our track is actually going to be elsewhere, and that's going to allow us down the road uh, to use this centre point as a reference to actually uh, to actually uh, generate our our patch using a paint tool, so that it's sampling from a different area of the uh, uh, of the of the green screen. Obviously, if it was sampling from this center, then even though the the marker the uh, the area would be moving around, so would the patch, and therefore the patch would have the cross on it. So we don't want that. We want to actually be sampling from a different area. And obviously, where you put this uh, marker will will vary very much depending on your plate. Uh, obviously, if you've got a lot of markers in close proximity. Or you've got a lot of other areas that you don't want to uh, that, that that you don't want to actually sort of take the place of the patch, uh, then you might have to think a little bit differently about where you position this. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the track type to raw, um, and the reason why I'm doing that is actually because I'm not actually going to apply this track uh, in in the way that you might normally expect, where we uh, where we apply it to something like a null object. Uh, I'm just going to actually generate the track. I'm not actually going to go through the second phase of the tracking process to uh, to apply it. I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to basically create a track, and then I'm going to link it up using expressions. So we'll track this now. Hopefully, it will track OK. And there we are. It's a relatively short clip, and so uh, it completes quite quickly. And we can see there that we've got a pretty good lock on that uh, on that crosshair. So we're now ready to paint out our marker. Um, now for those of you that have used paint tools before in After Effects, you'll be aware that you, you use the paint tools within the layer view. And uh, thankfully, because uh, tracking also uses the layer view, we've already got our layer uh, panel open and our plate within it. So I'll just change the view within the layer to, to none. Just so that it hides our uh, our tracking uh, marker from the uh, from the view, which is going to enable us to better select our uh, our our paint area that we're going to use to cover the uh, the tracking marker. So I'm now going to select the paint uh, panel, and I'm going to take the clone stamp tool. Now we can see at the moment that it's quite small. Uh, there are obviously keyboard shortcuts uh, that that are going to enable us uh, to do this. 
um, but I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to do it sort of the uh, the the longhand way just to sort of uh, look around the tools. Let's go for a brush around around 35. That's clearly not big enough. 45. That that's that's not too bad. I'll just actually manually set it to 50. And that's looking like a, a nice coverage. We should be able to create a little bit of fall off around that and still cover the boundaries of the marker. So I'll just come down here somewhere fairly close to where I uh, where I moved the uh, the track center to. I'm just going to hold down Alt to take a sample area, click it, and then I'm just going to come over the tracking marker and just click once. Uh, it's not great. I think I'll I'll just undo that, and I'll just make my um, I'll just make my brush a little bit bigger. Reselect and click again. I'm trying to do this with just one. Um, stop that and go back to that previous point where we're actually making the selection. So we're now ready to uh, paint out the uh, the marker. Now we need to be in the layer panel. If any of you have used the um, uh, the paint tools in After Effects before, you'll know that you uh, you apply these within the layer view. Thankfully, we're already in the layer view because uh, the tracking system also uses the layer uh, view for, uh, for to perform the first stage of the tracking process. Uh, so this is a good place to start. What we do need to do is we need to set the view to none just to hide our tracking box otherwise it'll get in the way and we can also switch to our paint uh, our paint panel to bring up our tools here and we can see that we've got our uh, we've got our brushes and we've got our we've got our basic paint tools in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the clone stamp tool. You can see here that when we select this, we can see the brush on the screen, and we and we can set the size of the brush. We can use keyboard shortcuts for this, or we can actually sort of manually sort of move the move these values around. I'm going to have a leave a diameter of round about 50, and I'm just going to set a hardness to about 50% uh, as well. And that's just going to sort of uh, control the amount of feather uh, on this uh, on this particular uh, this particular patch when I paint it. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down Alt and I'm just going to sample from somewhere down here, which is where roughly where I put the uh, uh, where I put the feature center. Uh, it doesn't matter about being too precise because I'm actually going to hook it up with an expression in in a few minutes. So I'm just going to hold down Alt to sample from this area, make my selection, and then come up over the marker and just click once. And there we go. We've got a we've got a clean removal just with one click of the brush. Okay, so we'll look what we we have what looks like a decent repair. So let's just run preview this and take a look. Okay, so we can see a slight problem. We can clearly see that the uh, that the patch is okay on the first frame where we uh, where we perform the actual uh, where we perform the 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 clone stamp. But obviously, as the uh, as the plate starts to move, the tracking marker moves its position. But our patch is obviously static. And this clearly means that we need to uh, we need to make our, our patch follow that tracking marker. So to do this, we're going to use a couple of expressions. I'm actually going to select my uh, select my timeline, and uh, and maximize it so we can actually see uh, all the properties on the timeline, and we can see our tracker up here. We can see all the components of our tracker, um, and we can see our paint here with the uh, with the, with the clone. Uh, again, it's just a single clone. Okay, so there are two properties that we want to uh, that we want to look at. Uh, uh, first of all, we want to look at the at uh, the position of our clone, and what we want to do is we want to connect this to the feature center of the um, of, of the track point. So to do this, we're going to alt click on our position to bring up the expressions, and we can simply pick whip across to the feature center release and it enter okay so just minimize the uh, the timeline and we'll see what's uh, see what's occurring okay so let's just scrub the timeline so now we have a different problem the expression we just applied causes the patch to follow the tracking marker which is what we want However, the area of the screen that the patch is using to sample into the clone is still in a fixed position. So therefore, as the plate plays out, different parts of the image occupy the space where we're sampling from. 
we can clearly see the girder filling the patch as this part of the image moves across. So we therefore need the sampling area to move commensurate to the patch. So what we need to do is we need to get hold of the feature center and make sure that that actually follows the same sort of path as the, as the track so that it's always sampling from a reasonable area. And this is essentially why we offset the feature center of the, of, of the track in the first place so we can actually use that as a reference point and connect our, uh, our, our, our sampling area to that. So we need to maximize our, uh, our, time our timeline again so that we can get at the properties and we'll take a look at what we need to access now. So if we start by looking at the in the paint properties if we come down the stroke options we can see these options called clone source as a subset of the stroke options and within this clone source there's a property called clone position and this is what we want because essentially this is the area where the where the where the, the patch will actually take its sample from so this is the area that we need to connect and what we need to do if we come to this we can see our attach point here and what so this is what we need to do we need to connect our clone our clone position to the attach point and don't forget that we move the attach point outside of the boundaries of the tracking box so that it was sampling always sampling an area of green just below that area so we're going to alt click on the clone position and then we're going to pick whip to the attach point. Again press enter to accept the expression and we'll come out. So let's preview this now and take a look. In fact I'll close down the layer view so that we can actually see the, the, main, uh, the, the main view inside the composition panel and we'll just preview this. And we can see now that we've achieved a patch on that, uh, on that marker uh, the clone is now sampling from the attach points position rather than the feature center. So therefore as long as the attach point is always sampling a green part of the image then the clone will always provide a continuous and clean patch. So we can see that we've achieved our objective. Okay, hope you found that exercise useful.